Hey, Nick. Uh, Hello. What was the uh, the last game like? Uh, Brent Deerman talked to us a little bit earlier and said you might have learned a few minutes before the game that you were going to you're going to play significant action. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how did that whole experience unfold? Well, the whole uh, leading up to the game, we weren't sure, you know, what was going to be happening, and so I was I was preparing myself to be playing a lot, but I didn't know that I'd actually be starting until a couple minutes before the games. Coach Elliott pulled me over and he was like, hey, uh, you're going to be, you know, you're, you're starting today. So be ready. Uh, you know, don't overthink things. You just go out there and play. If you make any mistakes, just don't worry about it and just keep playing. So it was nice to. Did, did you have it. time to, yeah, did you have time to reach out to any family members or friends to let them know, hey, you might want to watch, be watching this game? Uh, before the, before we went out there, yeah, I was like, hey, it sounds like I'm going to be playing quite a bit today. But I didn't know I was going to be starting until we were on the field and about to go out. So I didn't have time to tell him that. But I was at least able to tell him that it was sounding like I was going to be playing quite a bit. And then you performed pretty well. Did uh, did you kind of exceed your own expectations? And I think you, I think you might have played, uh, I think, as many snaps as DJ Elliott said that he's ever had someone play. Uh, yes, sir. I had uh, – I think I came out for one play, and that was just to get my shoe fixed. But I, I played every defensive snap. But um, I think I kind of surprised myself a little bit, but I also knew I was going to make a few mistakes. And, then, I mean, I really did. You know, uh, going back and watching the film, there were a few times where I overran my gap or I didn't get in the right gap, and it ended up hurting us a little bit. But I, I did make a few plays, but there's still room for me to improve a lot. Uh, Coach Elliott said that you're – are you pre-med, I think he said? Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. Um, what has this whole experience been like this season, uh, your first year here with the pandemic and everything, given your – you know, what you wanted, the career field you want to go into and just playing with everything going on? I mean, it's really kind of shown me that we can work through a lot and that um, really no matter what we're faced with, we can always think of ways to work past it and to keep on going about our, our – daily lives and to, even though it might be different we're still able to do everything that we need to get done so that's really what I've really kind of taken from this whole pandemic experience. Hey Nick could you go back through the process where you chose KU and just talk about how you ended up at KU and also weren't you mainly a running back what wasn't that what you got your awards for in high school? Uh, yeah in high school I was so I played only offense my freshman and sophomore years in high school. And then junior year, I played running back and safety. And then senior year, I played running back and linebacker. Um, I really wasn't recruited very much by Division One schools, really just kind of Division Two schools. But, I mean, I knew what I was capable of, and I was willing to bet on myself to, you know, come play Division One football and to work my way up. And, I'm, I mean, I've grown up in Kansas. I'm from Wichita. And I've been a KU fan my whole life, you know. Um, and I just th- thought that KU would have been a good choice for me to try to work my way up and kind of claim my spot, really. Hey, Nick, how much linebacker have you played since you got to KU? I think on the roster, you're still listed as a safety. Yeah, I don't really know why I'm really listed as a safety. Uh, I think that got uh, switched the summer, I think, because my grandpa texted me. He was like, hey, you're listed at safety. Did anything change? And I was like, no, I'm still at linebacker. But I've been at linebacker the whole time that I've been here. And uh, when I first came in, we weren't really sure if it was going to be safety or linebacker, but we ended up sticking with linebacker. It sounds like your grandpa follows your career pretty closely. Yeah, he does. He, he checks, he reads everything, checks all the articles, and looks over everything quite pretty frequently. What's his name, and uh, has he been one of the bigger influences on your on your football career? Yeah, he yeah, his name's Dale Channel. He's my you know my dad's my dad's dad, and he's had a pretty good impact on everything that I've done because he he uh, I think he's about getting close to eighty, if not already there, and he's he's been running for as long as I can remember, and it just kind of you know teaches me to keep on going, even though. I might be getting older. I mean, I'm not really old, but just keep on going and not not giving up on anything. What what kind of feedback did you get from your coaches uh, after 
after the game. I mean, I think you pointed it out. There were probably some really strong plays that you made and maybe a couple of mistakes. But I guess just did you get a sense from anyone that you might be able to um, maybe play a lot more moving forward just because you've, you've shown now in a game that you can make plays? Yeah, I think most of the coaches were pretty impressed with what I was able to do. Um, I'm really hoping that I'm able to start getting in more, but, you know, with Drew Prox, I mean, Drew Prox is a fantastic linebacker. I mean, he's it's kind of hard to try to, you know, take his spot with how good he is, but hopefully I'll be able to work my way more into the rotation and get more snaps than I was before. Hey, Nick, you had uh, you'd mentioned your grandfather. What was the reception like after the game from your family, aside from your grandfather? They were all really proud of me. I I live right by the stadium, so they, they met me there. I walked home, and they were all super proud of me, and they all hugged me, and they were just excited to, to watch me play. Yeah, and then uh, just kind of a off-the-wall question, what's harder, studying in pre-med or studying Big 12 offenses? Probably Big 12 offenses. I uh, I don't want to sound cocky, but, I mean, school is kind of easy. But <laughs> – uh, studying studying offenses are a little bit more difficult than, you know, memorizing what, you know, biology and, and whatnot, chemistry, all that. Because you know, offenses they they change, and you you're not you don't really know exactly what you need to expect with school. It's I mean, it's this is the answer. So, I think football is a little bit harder to study. What made you want to get into pre med, and is that a decision that has uh, been? emboldened by the pandemic or any has that affected your your decision at all uh no it started out in high school so i originally wanted to be an aerospace engineer uh that's what my grandpa on my mom's side of the family is and i, I you know i think airplanes are really cool and everything but i took so my junior year of high school i took calculus one and then my senior year i took calculus two and i was like i really don't want to do that for the rest of my life so, and I also took an anatomy class my junior year and I really liked that and I thought it was really interesting. So I kind of started looking into it and also one of my friends from high school, he had uh, ACL surgery, his June, no. Yeah, it was um, the spring of our sophomore year and then he had it again our senior year and just, you know, watching him go through all that, it was all really interesting and I figured that was maybe something that I, would want to do later on so is, is there a specific field you're hoping to get into eventually orthopedic you know I, I really like working on muscles and bones and everything like that and it's helps me stay into like all the sports and everything you know with like team doctors and everything Hey, how, how concerned were you when uh, you all found out that, that Coach Miles had COVID? And um, I don't know, just kind of what's what have been your thoughts on how it might be kind of challenging for, for him and the staff with this going on? You know, when he, he initially told us, we were all kind of shocked, you know. I mean, who wouldn't be? And we weren't really sure what was going to go on, and we were kind of in the dark for a little bit. But ultimately, we, we've got a job to do. And it's, you know, that's to prepare for the next game. And especially considering how well Coach Miles is doing, I think he's doing pretty well. You know, we can, you know, keep doing our job and keep working towards what we need to be doing. So it's, I mean, it, and it's honestly not even too different than it was because most of our stuff is already online and virtual. And that's still how it's going to be right now with Coach Miles just at home doing virtual stuff. So. It's not much of a difference, but it's, I mean, it is different not having him here and having him at practice, but I, you know, it's something we're going to be able to work through and that we have to work through. Coach Elliott described you as kind of a serious, no nonsense type of guy. Uh, would you agree with that assessment? Yeah, kind of depends. There's times when I am pretty, I mean, there's majority of the time I'm pretty serious, but there's also times where I'm not, but to most people, I'm pretty serious. There have been some good KU linebackers to come through. Uh, did you look up to any of them when you were when you were coming up and a senior in high school? I'd always – so I've always been a KU fan. I don't – like football, at least anyway, I don't really follow it. 
outside of what I'm like, you know, like me and my team are actually doing. So, you know, I wasn't always following, you know, who's on what team and who's doing this and that, but I always kind of watched Ben Heaney and I always enjoyed watching him and seeing how he was doing. So he's really the only linebacker that I really paid attention to. Anything else for Nick? What, what was it about Ben Heaney? Why, why uh, were you maybe a little bit more interested in what was going on with him? I don't know. There's just something stuck out to him about me. He always seemed like he was also a pretty serious guy. I mean, I don't really know him, but he always seemed like he was serious and was focused on, you know, the task at hand and didn't really let anything get in the way of him and was always just tuned in to what was going on on the field and wouldn't let anything else get in the way. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks.